time this season, this week on Worldwide Gaming. Liam reviews Dear Esther. John looks at the top 10 long games. At Gamescom 2014, we talk with a co-founder of Turtle Rock Studios about Evolve. And everyone's favourite, the bloopers. Hello and welcome to Worldwide Gaming. I'm your host Ryan. I'm Lysander. I'm Vince. And today we finally get to check out Evolve. Uh, me and Vince went to E3. Didn't get a chance to play it, unfortunately. The line was a bit long. I didn't know much about Evolve until I walked in the door, saw the massive kind of scary sculpture. The, uh, yeah. the Goliath. Yeah, that thing was wicked. Yeah, um, but at Gamescom, uh, we actually got to play it and have an interview um, with the co-creator of uh, Total Rock Studios, which is pretty awesome. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> I envy your mustache. Oh, I yeah. envy you so much. All right, but uh, right now we have the forecast. The sky is looking procedurally generated in the upcoming No Man's Sky. This ambitious title is coming in 2015 for the PlayStation 4 and PC. We're looking forward to seeing if a small indie team can pull off a game this big. We give it a 4. The air is looking misty with the upcoming adventure game, Abduction. Intended to serve as the spiritual successor to Mist and Riven, it looks like it could be a great game for fans of the series, so we've given it a 1. The Himalayas look to be getting lots of sun in the upcoming Far Cry 4, coming to last and current gen consoles as well as PC. The WG team can't wait to be riding elephants and flying down chasms in our wingsuits, so we've given it a 5. I've begun my ascent on the green slope of the western side. I've looked deep into the mountain from the shaft and understood that I must go up and then find the way under. I will stash the last vestiges of my civilization in the stone walls and work deeper from there. I'm drawn by the aerial and the cliff edge. There is some form of rebirth waiting for me there. Whenever a friend, colleague, or stranger at a party asks me why I love video games, I tell them to play the Chinese room's Dear Esther. Best described as a virtual environment, Dear Esther bridges literature and video games and invites gamers and non-gamers alike into its world, with an abstract narrative, stunning environments and non-demanding mechanics. The vegetation here has fossilised from the roots up. To think they once grazed animals here, the remnants of occupation being evidence to that. Dear Esther is divided into four chapters and takes around one hour to complete overall. You begin your journey by a dilapidated lighthouse and spend the game carving a path through rocky beaches, abandoned farmsteads and the cavernous innards of the island itself. Accompanying you are disembodied readings of letters to the eponymous Esther, blending accounts of the island's history with the anguished musings of its former inhabitants. Although it presents a somewhat cohesive narrative, the Esther is a largely abstract affair. I personally found a lot of enjoyment in forming my own interpretation of the game's meaning but I can certainly see why some may see it as pretentious. The writing is heavy on metaphor and contradiction, and for players less interested in digging through multiple playthroughs, Theorester is probably too ambiguous to be enjoyed. Essentially, if you enjoy this type of game, Theorester is a must-buy. If you can't stand them though, it should probably be avoided at all costs. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome break services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. If the former doesn't phase you though, Dear Esther provides a satisfying, if rather lonely, experience. Evidence of human habitation is everywhere, 
but every site is long abandoned and creepy as all hell. More frightening are the ghostly silhouettes that can be spotted watching you from afar. They're never quite explained or even referenced by the game's main plot, which only adds to their mystique. Although certainly a rendering shorthand, even the island's plant life seems to watch you. This feeling of being watched is reinforced through a strong repetition of eye imagery, particularly in the game's cave section. This part of the island is astoundingly beautiful, and it's almost worth picking up the game to play through alone. Thousands of stalactites reach down from the ceiling as you make your way through impressive rock formations and deep pools of clear water. The expert lighting stunningly illuminates the dark walls with bioluminescent moss, and beams of moonlight penetrate from above. This attention to detail extends to the surface environments as well. In fact, I would happily place them among the greatest I've ever seen in gaming. The island doesn't feel like a video game level. It feels like a real place. Although navigating the island does feel natural, Diosa is highly linear. You can still walk off cliffs and drown yourself, but for the most part you'll be following a single path. Even the most basic actions, such as crouching and using a flashlight, are automated, positioning you to simply walk and absorb. This can be enhanced with a dark room and headphones, to allow yourself to fall fully into Dear Esther's world. A lot has been said of Dear Esther's status as a piece of media. While some are reluctant to let it into the video game club, others argue that it doesn't really matter. Unless the only medium you can glean any enjoyment out of is video games, who cares what you want to call it, as long as you enjoy it. I find myself firmly in the second group. Dear Esther can be super restrictive, sure but I believe it pushes games in a more refined, interesting direction and is more than worth checking out. Reading Donnelly by the weak afternoon sunlight, he landed on the south side of the island, followed the path to the bay and climbed the mount. He did not find the caves and he did not chart the north side. I think this is why his understanding of the island is flawed, incomplete. He stood on the mount and only wondered momentarily how to descend, but then he didn't have my reasons. Hey guys, if you've been enjoying the show, you can head on over to Facebook where you can catch up on all the latest stuff we've been doing. You can also go to YouTube where you can watch past episodes, blooper reels and extended cuts. And then we also have the WG cast on iTunes.